During this hour, the proceedings of the Theocratic Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses at Detroit, Michigan, will be brought to all convention points in the United States. It gives me great pleasure and a privilege to introduce Judge Rutherford on the timely topic, Religion as a World Remedy. Self-government of the people is rapidly vanishing from the earth. Harsh, scornful dictators are taking control. Great distress is upon the world and millions are seeking a place of refuge. What is the remedy for such terrible conditions? Political and commercial men of high standing urge upon the nations more religion as the world remedy. In America, those men say, unless we have more religion, America is certain to perish. The President of the United States, in sending his personal ambassador to the Vatican, said to the Pope, quote, Your Holiness, it is well that we encourage a closer association between those in religion and those in government who have a common call. If religion is the remedy, then all honest persons should lay hold upon that remedy. If the evidence does not support the claim that religion is the remedy, then an adequate remedy should be eagerly sought. Only by sober and sincere consideration of truthful evidence can the right conclusion be reached. I earnestly ask all persons of goodwill to give close attention to the statement of the facts. Those who love righteousness and peace will give a hearing ear. The lawless element will not give heed to anything of reason. The terrible distress now from the world was foretold centuries ago by the holy prophets of Almighty God and recorded in the Bible. It is reasonable that we should go to the divine record, the Bible, and thy seek to learn the cause of distress and what is the true remedy. The Bible contains the truth because it is the word of Almighty God. It has ever been the guide of those persons who desire to see righteousness and lasting peace in the earth. It is written in God's word. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear through, the people mourn. The universal mourning of the people now eloquently testifies to the fact that the wicked rule the present world. Because of Jehovah's prophecy plainly foretold that dictators would gain control of Europe, it was my privilege to publicly call attention to this fact more than three years ago and warn the European people of the present disaster that now exists there. On the present occasion, I shall point out what the prophecies show is certain to come to America in a very short time and what part religion plays in the matter. The American nation was founded by men who believed Almighty God and who believed that the Bible is his word of truth. For centuries, the people of America prospered and dwelt together in peace, exactly contrary to what we see now in the nation. I appeal to the reasonable people at this time to exercise full faith and confidence in the Almighty God and in the Bible, his word, and let the burning question of the hour, of the hour be answered by the infallible testimony of the Bible. From whence came the wicked rule of the world? The Bible answers, Satan the devil is the invisible chief ruler of the world and is supported by a horde of wicked angels, all of whom are called mighty ones are gods and further supported on earth by multitudes of conscienceless men 
who revel in unrighteousness. In every form of religion that is practiced, there is recognized by men higher invisible powers that dictate the course of men who follow tradition. Religion and Christianity are not the same thing. They're exactly opposed to each other. The Bible defines both, and those definitions we should accept. Religion means the doing of anything that is contrary to the will of Almighty God. And that definition is not subject to contradiction. Christianity means joyfully doing that which is in full harmony with the will of Almighty God, whose name alone is Jehovah. Satan the devil introduced religion to man. Christ Jesus is the founder and head of Christianity and of Jehovah's Witnesses. Christianity is the fear of Almighty God, that is, fear to ever go contrary to God's will. Religion is the fear of creatures. From the beginning, religion denied Jehovah God as the Almighty Power and accepted creatures as equal to or greater than Jehovah God. Mark the Bible, Bible proof. Satan rebelled against Almighty God and then challenged God to put men on earth who would be faithful to the great creator. That raised the issue of who is supreme. The Almighty God informed man that the death penalty would be inflicted upon man who willfully violated God's law and that eating of forbidden fruit would constitute a violation of God's law. Satan, in defiance of God's law, said to Eve, If you eat of the fruit that is forbidden, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, that is, as the angels, all of whom are creatures. Man willfully took the course of disobedience of God's law, accepted Satan as the higher authority, and in that manner, Satan introduced man to religion. At all times since, Satan's chief means of fighting against God has been and is religion. The head of Christianity, Christ Jesus, said to Jehovah, Psalms 40, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is written in my heart. That is Christianity. Jesus is the great Christian, always doing the will of Jehovah God. Every person who knowingly and gladly does the will of God as Christ Jesus does is a Christian. To be a Christian, one must gladly obey Almighty God without fear of man or other creatures. Approximately 16 centuries after the creation of man, Satan, by means of religion, had corrupted all the peoples of the earth except Noah and his family. The great flood destroyed all mankind, save Noah and his family of eight persons. Noah was a righteous man and a preacher of righteousness, and therefore Almighty God saved him and his family. Religion there brought destruction upon all mankind. Only those who obeyed God survived. You who are of goodwill toward God and who believe that the Bible is his word, please now follow the Bible's history of man, which briefly recounts the facts leading up to the present deplorable conditions prevailing all over the earth. I address my speech to those of goodwill with the hope of doing them some good. Satan, the subtle foe, always tries to entrap men and to destroy them. In this, he, Satan, often appears as an angel of light, yet he is the most wicked of all. A few centuries after the flood, the descendants of Noah became religious, with Nimrod as their priest and ruler. Nimrod built Nineveh, and the nation of Babylon set himself up as an arbitrary dictator. He caused the people to hail him and to bow before him as though he were a mighty god. Babylon and its king Nimrod were given over entirely to wickedness. Following Nimrod, other nations were organized, all of which adopted and practiced religion, yielded to Satan and the other demons, and all acting contrary to God's will. The Almighty God, Jehovah, purposed the vindication of his name 
and that he would have a people for his name who would serve him and bear testimony to his supremacy. He selected the descendants of Abraham and Jacob, called Israelites. He led them out of the land of Egypt, the devil religious nation. Under the leadership of Moses, God took the Israelites on a long journey to Palestine, the land of promise. Mark now the commandment God gave to the Israelites, warning them that demonism or religion would be a snare unto them. Concerning the practitioners of religion in Canaan, Jehovah said these words to the Israelites, For they will turn away thou and thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. God then commanded his people to keep themselves entirely separate from those religious people dwelling in the land of Palestine. And to them he said, Neither shalt thou serve their gods, demons, for that will be a snare unto you. And that's where we get the words, religion is a snare. Satan and his associate demons set about to ensnare the Israelites by means of religion. Although God had repeatedly warned Israelites against such snare, Saul, Israel's first king, fell to demonism, turning to the witch of Endor for aid and ignoring the word of God. Religion did not bring salvation and prosperity to Israel, but on the contrary, religion was the cause of Israel's downfall, and concerning this it is written in the 106th Psalm, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Israel's rulers, having turned to religion, to her last king Jehovah, uttered these words, And thou, profane, wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end, I will overturn, overturn it until he shall come whose right it is. But who is his right? Christ Jesus, him whose right it is mentioned in this prophecy. Jesus, the rightful ruler of the world. Christ means the anointed and commissioned official of Almighty God, Jehovah. Christ Jesus is the head over all Christians. He is the chief, Jehovah's Witnesses, and the head over all of Jehovah's Witnesses. Those who obey God's law, as Christ Jesus obeys, are Christians and none other are. Many Christians have been associated with religious organizations, because they did not know that religion is a snare. When these honest and sincere ones learn the truth, they flee from religion and flee to God and Christ. Jehovah's Witnesses have no fight with any person because of his religious beliefs. Many Jews, Catholics, and so-called Protestants have been unwittingly ensnared by religion. It is the duty and privilege of every Christian to aid such, to see and understand the truth in order that those understanding might devote themselves to God and to his kingdom. The only purpose of calling attention to the difference between religion and Christianity is to aid men to see that God's law is the only safe guide and obedience to God is man's only protection. Tradition is that which is transmitted from father to son from ancestor to posterity, without regard to God's written law. Religion is taught by tradition and not by the written law of God. Christianity is bottomed solely upon the written word of Almighty God. The words of Christ Jesus constitute absolute authority because spoken at God's commandment and such should be entirely sufficient for everyone who desires to take the right course. The Israelites, being God's chosen people, were the custodian of God's written word. The priests were commanded to obey and to teach God's law to the people, but instead they turned to tradition. They induced the people to practice religion in the place of Christianity. Choosing religion, they despised and rejected Christ Jesus, God's anointed king. Instead, they chose Caesar, the dictator, as king, just as the hierarchy is doing today. To them, Jesus said, 
Why do you transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Thus have you made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. Well did God's prophet say of you, These people draw us nigh unto me with their mouths, but their heart is far removed from me. Furthermore, Jesus said to those religious teachers, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, was at one time a teacher of religion by tradition. When he became a Christian, he wrote these words, quote, For ye have heard of my course in times past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God to reveal his Son unto me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. The gospel which I announced came to me by revelation from Jesus Christ. Paul fully recognized and declared that religion is demonism, introduced by and taught under the power and influence of the devil and associate demons. When Paul was at Athens and observed that people in their religious practices, he said to them, Athenians, I perceive that in all things you're extremely devoted to the worship of demons. Further testifying concerning religion as the invention of the demons, brought forth to deceive men and to reproach God's name, Paul said to the Corinthians, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils and not unto God. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of demons. That which is called the Christian religion is not Christian. It is a religious practice carried on under the name of Christ, but which is in defiance of the law of Almighty God and which gives honor to creatures rather than to Almighty God and which deceives millions of sincere persons. As a pointed example, I cite the words of the venerable Cardinal Gibbons, who, after stating the doctrine of purgatory in his book, adds these words on page 208. This interpretation is not mine. It is the unanimous voice of the fathers of Christendom. That is, entirely traditional and not supported by the word of God. After the days of the apostles, a sincere body of men organized themselves as Christians. Thereafter, subtly Satan, the chief of demons, induced men in that organization to advance and teach their own views contrary to the Bible, and thereby they substituted religion for Christianity. Thereafter, they taught the traditions of men. Their successors did likewise. That has been dubbed the Christian organization, although entirely contrary to God's word. The indisputable proof is that religion finds no support in the Bible, but finds its support in tradition and is in defiance of the Bible. That being true, what then can be said in support of religion as a remedy? for the deplorable world conditions that exist today. Not one thing. All the evidence shows that religion has never saved in a nation, but has been the downfall thus far of all nations that have fallen. The best way to answer the question here propounded as to religion being a remedy is to carefully consider the facts showing what results religion has brought upon the nations of the earth. What has religion done for the nations of the world? The only great man ever on earth was Jesus of Nazareth. He was the head of all Christians. Jesus plainly stated to the leaders of Israel that they had violated their covenant to do the will of God and had turned to religion. Because Jesus told the truth to those religious leaders, they persecuted Jesus unto death. Religion therefore brought down the nation of Israel and upon that nation the wrath of God. And that nation was completely destroyed. Why? That nation yielded to demonism or religion. And for that reason, that nation perished. 
The apostles of Christ Jesus were faithful to their covenant to do God's will, and for that reason suffered great persecution at the hands of religious leaders. Thereafter, the mighty system of religion falsely labeled Christian religion grew. Under the false title, millions of sincere persons have been deceived and misled. That organization today is ruled by the hierarchy of authority, the seat of which is at Vatican City, Italy. For more than 16 centuries, that religious institution has carried on the most wicked persecution of human creatures that has ever blackened the pages of history. The Inquisition of Spain, Mexico, and other nations conducted under the false cloak of so-called Christian religion is a record too bloody and too terrible to find complete description in human words. That record is conclusive proof that the papal system is not Christianity, but is demonism and is carried on in defiance of God, hence religion. <laughs> the hierarchy of authority have always favored and supported a totalitarian or corporate state. For a period of time, that organization was retarded in its movement to control the world. But since the World War, it has again become very aggressive and although claiming to serve God, the hierarchy of authority now stoops to all unholy means of conquering the world for selfish gain. The hierarchy acts in full harmony and in conjunction with the cruel dictator including Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini, and others of like political ambition. Like political am the head of that great religious system is the advisor and close ally of Hitler, who has threatened to overrun all the democracies of the world and is succeeding fairly well. Religion has destroyed the freedom of nations in Europe now has turned its vicious claws upon the republics of the Western world. Without prejudice and without malice, and with a heart sincere desire to enlighten and to do good to all peoples of goodwill, I appeal to the American people this day to give calm consideration to the following facts, and to do so before all their liberties are gone. Basing my conclusion solely upon the Bible, I warned the nations of Europe in a public addresses in London, Paris, and Switzerland that totalitarianism, religious combine, would overrun Europe and take away the liberties of the people. That has been accomplished. If you give heed to the following facts, you can see what is in store for America. There are honest and sincere men who have been priests of the Catholic Church most of whom have recently separated themselves from that religious organization because of the hierarchy's political activities which are called Catholic action. There are millions of sincere and honest Catholic people held in subjection to the hierarchy because of fear of creatures. All such persons should calmly hear the evidence here submitted for the reason that evidence shows that the mighty religious organization is acting with Nazis fascist dictators to destroy all the liberties of the people on earth. I shall cite some of the evidence given by men who have come out from that religious organization and whose testimony is entitled to full consideration. Dr. Barrett of New York, once an active priest, has published a book under the title, Rome Stoops to Conquer, and which contains facts vital to American liberty and to all persons who love righteousness. All sincere persons would do well to read that book. Briefly, I quote from him as follows, quote, Pope Pius XI has given the best of his singular ability to the supervision and direction of the Catholic campaign in America, Mark. The conquest of America is the supreme objective at which he aims. Pius is well aware that the Catholic Church can never hope again to dominate the civilized world until America kneels beaten and penitent at her feet. Catholic action partakes of politics 
and is a political penetration and infiltration into the political world of a new force and agency. Caccelli, now the Pope, urged on the Knights of Columbus to rally Catholic manhood as necessary for the practical solution of those problems of social and civil life. A phase of present-day Catholic action, continues Dr. Barrett, is urging of Catholics to throw themselves into politics. The Church prefers to control legislators rather than parties and to avoid the odium and expense of running a distinct organization. But the Church wants plenty of high offices for her children. The most sensational use of political power to force a Church issue was that of Archbishop Curley when he threatened the present administration and President Roosevelt in particular. The police are first in favor of the church, that having them in their thousands, in her toe, she, the church, can all the more easily command the politicians. Never was the Catholic Church in any country in the world since Christendom began so rich, highly organized, so influential, so loyally soldiered by her subjects as she is today in the United States in the profession. Dear Catholics, honest and sincere Catholics should give the most sober consideration to this testimony of Dr. Barrett, who speaks with full knowledge because of his long association with the Catholic organization. The testimony of another priest, O'Brien, is of interest, and which testimony was published over his own signature in the Laurora. Amongst other things he said concerning Catholic action, quote, We want a cabinet as cabinet members of the Holy Mother Church holding important positions in the entire structure of the government. Mark this. We are ready, prepared for 1940. All institutions must be wiped out, are placed under the protection of our hierarchy. All loyal children of the Catholic Church are to, insist, are to assist our worthy president with all strength to see that the individuals comprising the United States Supreme Court shall obey the president's injunction, and if necessary, we will change, amend, or blot out the present Constitution, end of quote. 1940 is here, and the abundance of evidence is to the effect that Catholic action is carrying out the threat of Priest O'Brien. Catholic fascist conspirators in Canada, led by Adrian Arcand and directed from the Vatican, intended to seize the Canadian government during 1940. Adrian and other conspirators have been arrested. Among the many documents seized by the Canadian officers, the following has just been published. This communication addressed to Adrian from the Committee of Universal Action in Rome reads, quote, it's quite time that we observe your fascist activity in your great and noble land during a long conversation with the person of whom I enclose this note. He promised to fight to the best to help you in your holy war. Thus we could learn that you establish in Canada good fascism, genuine fascism, a pure miscellany brand. That is Roman and Catholic, end of quote. The following is from Bulawa, South Rhodesia, South Africa. Quote, next to Adolf Hitler, I consider Adrian Arkan the most favored of chief amongst all others I had the chance to meet. He possesses the good nose, energy, and originality of real leaders. Evidently Catholic, as all French Canadians are, he knows how to use the clerical element and to what extent you can trust them. On the first sign of communistic anti-Semitic uprising in Canada, he will be in good shape to seize the government of your land." End of quote. I remind you it was in Bulawa, South Rhodesia, that the hierarchy from Rome, operating with others maliciously, lied against Jehovah's Witnesses and caused them great persecution, charging them with a crime that the hierarchy alone was guilty of. 
This they did to cover up their nefarious acts of trying to seize South Africa as well as other parts of the world. Recently, a number of conscientious Catholic priests have withdrawn from the Catholic hierarchy organization and are attempting to enlighten the people by publishing a magazine in New York entitled The Converted Catholic. I quote from the editorial column of that magazine of June 1940 the following, quote, Hitler's ambitions to conquer the world were planned and desired long before Hitler or any of his Axis partners ever appeared on the scene. Hitler's objectives are the same as those sought for four centuries by Jesuit-led Catholicism in its effort to destroy the effects of the Reformation. Nazis, fascists, dictators, all products of the Catholic Church have supplied the means that are rapidly bringing this object to a realization. Continue. In Germany and in Central Europe, Hitler has undertaken to destroy entirely all freedom of spirit, and his attack can be placed in the wind column of the Catholic Church. That's the testimony of a Catholic priest. Here's another one. Catholic action in the United States is feverishly working for the organization of a corporate movement and the creation of a corporate state. End of quote. The Catholic priest Curran, editor of the Catholic Tablet, published in Brooklyn, is an ardent supporter of the so-called Christian Front. In his support of lawbreakers, he recently said, quote, it is about time we took over the newspapers of this country. Many of the big, big newspapers today fear to publish the truth about Catholic action because of the boycott methods constantly employed and practiced by the hierarchy. Nazi fascists are attempting to destroy entirely the freedom of all nations, and in this attack they are fully supportive of the hierarchy of Vatican City. When the Catholic peoples of Belgium were driven like wild beasts from their homes recently, the following dispatch was sent out from Berlin and published throughout the world, dated June 6, Berlin, 1940. Quote, special meetings of the Roman Catholic bishops throughout Germany have resulted in a decision to hold Thanksgiving Masses for the German victory in Belgium and Flanders, it was reported today. Religious ceremonies performed toward creatures and things is another scheme of the devil to reproach Jehovah's name and to cause people to violate their covenant with God. Compulsory flag saluting and the hiring of Hitler was introduced in Germany by the religionists to compel submission of the people to religious dictators and to reproach God's name and to persecute Jehovah's Witnesses who faithfully serve God. The secret police, or Gestapo, came into action at the same time, brutally using power against those who declined to indulge in the religious ceremony of saluting the swastika and hiring Hitler. The hierarchy are the real movers of the compulsory flag saluting and honoring creatures. Because the Christians in Germany refuse to yield to such religious ceremonies, thousands of them have been incarcerated in prison and many of them killed. They prefer to suffer death rather than to violate their covenant to be obedient to Almighty God. In America, in America, Compulsory saluting of the flag by school children was introduced at the instance of the hierarchy. It appeared in the form of patriotism, but really directed against those who worship God according to spirit and truth. The purpose has been to put fear to the minds of persons and to destroy individual conscience and devotion to Almighty God. No one for 150 years of American history ever thought of compelling anybody to salute the flag. And now, only school children and teachers are compelled to do so. The Supreme Court of the United States in the Gabbatis case was decided and that school children, school boards, might enforce rules compelling the children to salute the flag and that against their conscientious objection. The court made no attempt to decide that adults must salute the flag. 
No such issue was before the court. I argued the case myself, and I know there is no law today in America that compels adults to salute the flag. But the hierarchy and the lies, in order to browbeat the people, attempt to compel conscientious Christians contrary to the law of the land to violate God's law. Whenever the issue by law is raised compelling adults to salute the flag, that issue will be properly met before the court, not only by myself, but by the American Bar Association that appeared in the Gabitis case. <laughs> the true followers of Christ Jesus, who are Jehovah's Witnesses, do not salute any flag of any creature or thing for the reason that they conscientiously believe that by so doing they would violate their covenant with Almighty God and would therefore suffer destruction. Jehovah's Witnesses respect the flag and obey every law for which that flag stands. And they do so because it's right, not because they're compelled to, to indulge in a religious ceremony in violation of their conscience and their covenant with God they decline to do. They render unto the state that which is due the state, and unto God that which they owe God. That is exactly what Jesus commanded and what he always does. Jehovah's Witnesses obey all the laws of the land that are not contrary to Jehovah's law. All the law writers and the highest court of this land have for centuries recognized the right of individual conscience, and that the state has no right to compel a man to violate his conscience. Never have they deviated from that rule until Judge Frankfurter saw he had to. <laughs> the compulsory flag waivers are wholly inconsistent. They salute the flag and then straightway violate the law for which the flag stands, attempting to make themselves the law and to compel, compel others to obey their unlawful whims. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses are lawful citizens. The hierarchy and their allies who attempt to compel citizens to salute the flag are willful violators of the law, denying the freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and freedom of worship of Almighty God, which rights are guaranteed by the Constitution and for which the flag stands. Such fanatical religionists are therefore the lawbreakers and the righteous suffer at their hands. An organization known and branded as the American Legion may have been organized for laudable purposes. The organization doubtless contains some good conscientious name, even to this day. The acts and words of the present controlling officials of that organization, however, belie a good purpose. Its present national commander is a Roman Catholic and a Knight of Columbus, which organization takes orders from the hierarchy at Vatican City. The Legion is against the democratic form of government. Its former national commander, Crosley, publicly said, quote, Don't forget that the fascists are to Italy what the American Legion is to the United States. <laughs> the present national commander, in a speech recently made, openly denounces freedom of assembly and freedom of speech and has demanded the amendment of the Bill of Rights. Furthermore, in his speech a few days ago, the same commander advocated a private army by the Legion. That army is already in existence and well armed, waiting for the command of the hierarchy to move into action. The present national dictator of the Legion, Mr. Shalom, encourages and advocates mob violence against peaceable and law-abiding citizens who conscientiously serve God and Christ. These facts show that the official part of the Legion 
is against freedom of speech, freedom of worship, and freedom of assembly. <laughs> they tried to keep us away from here, but they can't resist God's success. <laughs> the present commander, whose name is Kelly, Acting under orders of the hierarchy issued on the 10th day of June, 1940, a public statement in which he used this language, quote, in my belief, the good of the whole nation compels summary action to be taken by our properly constituted federal, state, and local authorities to stamp out in their entirety the activities of the subverters, irrespective of what may happen to their fellow travelers or innocent bystanders, end of quote. In other words, he advocates mob action against citizens without the right of trial and without the right of defense. Such a course is nothing short of anarchy and is violence inflicted contrary to the law of the nation and to the law of God. On that same day of June, Mussolini stabbed France in the back and began war, began war against England. On that same day, Catholic priests, police officers, sheriffs, county attorneys, and other officials in various towns in Texas and other places led mobs that viciously beat and imprisoned many of Jehovah's Witnesses. And for what? Merely because Jehovah's Witnesses, acting under the command of God, calling upon the people and handing them literature, telling us God's kingdom for the establishment of the great theocratic government of righteousness, for which government Jesus taught his disciples to continuously pray. In Texas towns, as many as a hundred men, women, and children were thrown into one small prison and kept all night without food, drink, or rest. The next day, the mob of men claiming to represent the American Legion, together with his sheriff and other officers, drove those innocent people to the heat and denied them the opportunity to have refreshments, under which summary punishment many fainted and failed. In another city, a Catholic priest led a mob of legionnaires against Jehovah's Witnesses. In Florida, old men were taken from their homes and beaten up by professed legionnaires and Catholics. In Maine, Jehovah's Witnesses were assaulted in the night, their houses broken into and burned to the ground. In Alabama, the sheriff and other public officials kidnapped citizens, destroyed their property, and drove them out of the state, and delivered them in another state over to the legionnaires. And this they did, I presume, at Mr. Kelly's advocation of summary proceedings. <laughs> and here's some more summary proceedings that followed by reason of the advocacy of this distinguished gentleman. <laughs> In Richwood, West Virginia, American citizens who were exercising their constitutional right of securing signatures to a petition were violently assaulted by the American Legion. priest then publicly abused those defenseless persons, during which a policeman viciously assaulted one of these Christians because he quoted the scriptures. Nine of these Christians were tied together with ropes like cattle. A doctor with a stomach pump forced castor oil down their throats. Roped together, these witnesses were led from the town like wild animals, while the leaders of the American Legion denounced them in vile language, calling out against these witnesses, Hitler spies, fifth colonists. I can only here mention a few of these many outrages because there's such a great number. But I shall append to my speech a list of public officials, a copy of which has been filed in the Department of Justice at Washington, which men have, which 
violators have followed the advice of Mr. Kelly, the Roman Catholic legionnaire, to inflict summary punishment against innocent American citizens for exercising their constitutional rights. The legionnaires and other ruffians under the command of the hierarchy have made themselves vigilantes, inflicting summary punishment upon the innocent. But not one act against the Nazis or the fascists. Let them explain that. <laughs> the law of the land requires that the vilest murderer must have a trial before a jury of his peers and be given proper counsel and defense. The hierarchy and the legion commander, posing as great patriots, punish the innocent without even permitting them to be heard in their own defense. This is what religion has done for America. And yet, public officials cry, we must have more religion. Such cruel and unlawful action by the hierarchy and legionnaires and other lawbreakers is but the revival of the old Roman hierarchy and its cruel inquisition. Hitler is a lifelong Roman Catholic. Hitler has denounced God and declared his purpose to reestablish the Holy Roman Empire and to wipe out the Peace Treaty of Westphalia of 1638, which concluded a religious war of 30 years and which treaty resulted in gaining rights for freedom of worship. Mussolini has become a Catholic and works in conjunction with the hierarchy, taking his advice from the Pope and the Pope's blessing. Franco, a Catholic dictator, destroyed the Spanish Republic, now has united the, the Catholic Church and the state in Spain. France has ceased to be a republic and has become a totalitarian state with the blessing of the Pope. <laughs> Canada yielded to the sinister religious influence of the hierarchy and has recently debarred her Christian citizens from freedom of assembly and freedom of worship of Almighty God and the study of his word. Thousands of them desired to come to this convention but were prevented from doing so by reason of that law. Canada may soon learn, however, that Jehovah's Witnesses are the most law-abiding people in that land. <laughs> England alone stands firm battling against the religious totalitarian combine and in her fight for the rights of a free people, notwithstanding many fifth columnists in that nation. England has been kind to Jehovah's Witnesses and because of that kindly shown, it may be expected that Almighty God will show some special favor to England in her hour of terrible distress. <laughs> Men who love God and righteousness and who refuse to yield to religious tyrants and to bow down to and worship creatures or things, laid the foundation of the American Republic. A cause to be written in the fundamental law, all men have the undeniable right to worship God according to the dictates of his own conscience. That original spirit of freedom that permeated the founders of America has perished today, and spineless politicians and authority with fear and trembling yield to the lawless religious hierarchy and their allies who are destroying the freedom of speech of assembly and freedom of worship. Such is the further effect of religion in America. God-fearing men such as Wycliffe, Huss, Luther, and Knox, all of whom were once priests in the Catholic Church, but who because of the unrighteousness in that system withdrew and waged a battle for freedom of worship, brought about the great reformation which has been a blessing to mankind. Protestants and politicians of America, have you forgotten that fight for reformation won by those noble-hearted men? Why are you now conniving at the destruction of the reformation? Only the devil could lead persons thus to me. 
state officials invite Jehovah's Witnesses to meet in convention and enter into a contract for such lawful assembly. And then, without just cause or excuse, yield to the subtle influence of the religious hierarchy, repudiate their contracts, and deny the privilege of lawful assembly for our worship of God. When more than two million American citizens petitioned the governor of the state of Ohio to use his influence and power to ensure freedom of assembly and worship at Columbus, that petition was denied. The only excuse being given that this body of Christian people will not violate their conscience and practice idolatry in disobedience of God's law and thus jeopardize their eternal existence. The very things for which the American flag stands, the governor and other public officials repudiate because they haven't the moral courage to stand out against a ruthless, cruel, political religious hierarchy. Religious influence has caused the nations of Christendom to forget God and to ally themselves with the wicked enemies of Almighty God. It was my privilege to state before the Supreme Court of the United States recently, this court is the last bulwark of American liberty. And if this nation forgets God, this court turns against it and the nation falls. Now what shall be the final result and upon what of what authority was that statement made? The Bible at Psalms 917 answers, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Let the people therefore take warning from God's word. Almighty God has commanded that his faithful servants must now tell the honest and sincere people of the world that religion is a snare of the devil and which is leading them into destruction and that God's kingdom is their only hope. Jehovah's Witnesses are fear, fearlessly obeying that commandment. The great Christian Christ Jesus says to his true followers that they're not to fear men, whether they be of the hierarchy legionnaires or hoodlums who indulge in cruel persecution of Christians. The words of Jesus are, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Jehovah's Witnesses will continue to serve Almighty God and Christ his King regardless of persecution. <laughs> Why is there such a great hatred and persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses for the hierarchy? and their religious alliance. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are for the kingdom, the theocracy, for the coming of which government Christ Jesus commanded all Christians to ever pray. Demons, under the leadership of Satan, the chief of demons, have from the beginning been against God's kingdom under Christ. The Roman hierarchy, Nazi, fascists, are against all who tell the people of and concerning the theocracy under Christ. The religious leaders frequently attempted to kill Jesus because he announced himself as Jehovah's son and king. To those religious fanatics, Jesus said, Ye do the deeds of your father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. If the religionists now on earth were for Christ and his kingdom as they falsely claimed, they would not persecute persons who devote themselves wholly to advertising that kingdom. That was true when Jesus was on earth, and it's true today. <laughs> the Roman Catholic hierarchy takes the lead in religion. And Protestants and Jews, because they're fearful, join with them in their religious activities. Government officials and politicians embrace religion and cry for more religion. From the beginning, religion has been employed by the demons to deceive men and turn them away from God. Satan and his horde of demons now are making the last desperate attempt to rule the world by religious dictators in opposition to the theocratic government under Christ. 
Concerning the ruling powers of the world, it is written in 1 John, the world lies in wickedness. All organizations that take their orders from the religious hierarchy necessarily come under the control of demons. Religion is demonism. The demons control this wicked world. And for that reason, the religionists hate the theocratic government under Christ. Answering the question as to what would be the condition on earth at the end of the Satan's world, Jesus said to Christians, quote, Then ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That is the Bible answer to the vital question. Today, Jehovah's Witnesses who are Christians are hated because they're entirely devoted to the kingdom which bears the name of Christ. That's the only reason why they are persecuted and mobbed by religious fanatics just as the Lord prophesied it would be at this time. Jehovah's Witnesses are not a religious sect. They are not of recent origin. Since the day of Abel till this hour, there have been some of Jehovah's Witnesses on the earth, the proof of which is found in the Bible in Hebrews 11 chapter. Jehovah's Witnesses have no interest in religion, but they're commanded by the Lord to warn the people against religion. They are devoted solely to advertising the theocratic government under Christ because that government is the only hope of mankind. They are not dismayed by a reason of persecution that comes upon them. Many of them have been foully killed recently by religion. Others may be killed. But you will bear this in mind that God has declared that the blood of those slain shall be upon the head of the religious agents of the devil who perpetrate such crimes. <laughs> Christians are not afraid to die, but <laughs> they will not yield to persecution even in death in order to satisfy the whims of the religious fanatics. God has chosen as his witnesses and servants to his name men and women on this earth to give testimony now. Such that all are his elect. In this connection, mark the word of Jesus concerning the persecution of his faithful servants by the religious. Quote, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find this faith on the earth? This vengeance Jehovah will execute upon the religionists and others at the Battle of Armageddon, which is very near. How will he do it? Addressing himself to Christ Jesus, Jehovah says, quote, Thou shalt break them in pieces with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's God's judgment. Religion brought sin and death upon the human race. Religion brought about the destruction of the world by the flood. Religion caused the confusion of languages. Religion has drenched the earth with human blood. Religion brought the downfall of the nation of Israel. Religion and its wicked agents under the leadership of demons is destroying the people and will shortly bring down the wrath of Almighty God upon the whole world in the greatest tribulation ever known. <laughs> Only those who seek the Lord and righteousness will survive that great war. Here I can give only a few scriptural citations dealing with the matter. But I hold in my hand a book which gives the whole thing. <laughs> it is this day released to the public. All persons of goodwill who desire to know the truth should take their Bible and study it together with this book. 
It cites the text of the Bible showing you where you can find the proof. Read it carefully and you'll see what's the only hope left for mankind. Religion is not a remedy for human ill. Nothing can be said, therefore, in support of religion. In the face of all these indisputable facts, politicians continue to cry, Give us all religion in a third term, else we perish. <laughs> a fearful religious Congress has by law empowered the president at will to declare an emergency, seize control of all the industries of America, and commandeer everything in the land, men, money, and property. According to the hierarchy, the stage is set for 1940, and 1940 is here. There is now rapidly a rising tide in opposition to the third term. May it not be that when it appears extremely doubtful that the hierarchy politicians can put over the third term, that then the would-be dictator will seize the government. If so, he will surely be backed up by the armed hierarchy, the armed knights of Columbus, and by the private army of their legion, which... <laughs> then the religionists will cry out, we're at peace and safe. Honest Americans do not believe that religion is a remedy for world distress. The real and only remedy for human suffering and distress is the theocratic kingdom of God under Christ. That kingdom is here. <laughs> only by that kingdom shall the world be established. Therefore, to his servants, God gives this commandment as recorded in the scriptures. Well, Say among the nations that the Lord reigns. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. He shall judge the world in righteousness and the people with his truth. That's a wonderful promise. And the legionnaires and the hierarchy can't prevent that to a dead certainty. In this hour of great distress, the Lord is dividing the obedient ones from the disobedient. Those who now hasten to put themselves on the side of the Lord, the King, he says, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The worship of Jehovah God is the only true worship and is the only way to life, physically and spiritually. Understanding this truth, you can see why Jehovah's Witnesses cannot and will not bow down to creatures or things, but that they must and shall give their undivided devotion and service to Almighty God and his theocratic King, Christ Jesus. <laughs> the great multitude shall survive Armageddon and fill the earth with a righteous race. And these must now hasten to put themselves on the side of the theocracy and its king. I'm glad to say that there are thousands of these assembled today. And I look for thousands more to come soon. Let the religionists and politicians take notice once for all. God's theocratic government under Christ is marching triumphantly on. Those who love righteousness and hate iniquity shall be victorious through Christ the King. <laughs> the rulers of the earth have now forgotten God and turned to religion and are certain to go down in a very short time. Only the great multitude will survive and live forever on the earth. 
essentially earth become a glorious and blessed place in which to live. Turn your faces and your heart devotion to the Almighty God, Jehovah, and to his King Christ Jesus, and live. to this great convention. Much has been said about the American Legion and veterans of the foreign war and their attitude against this Christian convention. I was an officer in the World War and commanded a company at the front in France. I am a Christian now. <laughs> I, I, I ask you to have this resolution read to the convention and I ask the convention to unanimously adopt it and send it out as their message to the people. Brother Max Freshel, who was born a Jew, but who is a Christian by adoption, and who has had much experience with the Nazis in Europe, will appreciate reading this statement to the convention. I call upon him to do so. Upwards of 40,000 servants of the Most High God, Jehovah, now assembled in convention at Detroit, together with many other thousands assembled in 18 other cities of the United States, who are joined with this assembly by private telephone wires, do make this statement of fact for the benefit of the law-abiding, order-loving citizens of this nation who favor righteousness, freedom of assembly, and freedom of worship guaranteed by the Constitution. First, on three different years, at the invitation of the good people of Columbus, Ohio, we held our conventions in that city at the state fairgrounds. Again in 1940, Columbus officially expressed much pleasure concerning our former conventions and graciously invited us to meet there again this year. The invitation being accepted, the state fairground management entered into a contract with us for the use of the fairground for a period of five days for this convention. Great preparation was made and much advertisement of the city together with our convention. Thousands of homes of the good people of the city were thrown open to us and our coming was welcomed. Second, then members of the Roman Catholic hierarchy that political or religious organization that is directed and ruled from Rome brought to bear sufficient pressure upon the state officials controlling the fairgrounds, causing them to repudiate their contract and to deny us the use of the fairgrounds at our meeting there. Although thousands of the citizens of Columbus, together with more than two million others, protested against that wrongful action, we were not permitted to hold our convention in Columbus. Third, other places were sought, and only a few days prior to the date for our assembly, a hall was engaged in the city of Detroit for this convention, the rent for which was paid in full, and preparations for coming here began. Four, then immediately members of the Catholic hierarchy, together with the so-called American Legion and veterans of foreign wars, many of whom never saw a foreign shore, These, together with other lawless elements, bitterly opposed our meeting here and have acted in an unlawful manner toward us since we have come. Fifth, private homes of Detroit were gladly open to us and upwards of 20,000 of our people have been housed in these private homes, many others in hotels and boarding houses. The merchants and thousands of other citizens of this great city have treated us with unusual kindness and consideration, for all of which we express our deep appreciation. They have strongly expressed 
their disapproval of the action of religious and political leaders in this city, and for this we are very grateful and express our gratitude. <laughs> Six, many of the newspapers of Detroit have been unfavorable to us, publishing many false statements. Public officials of the city, under the dominating influence of fed religious leaders, have acted uncivilly, un-American, and very harshly against us. Although we have spent thousands of dollars here with Detroit merchants and have operated a large cafeteria to feed the poor, and although we are a charitable organization operating without pecuniary profits, the city tax collector has pursued the unusual course of requiring us to pay a license tax for the privilege of feeding the needy. Seven, most noticeably of all, however, has been the cruel and wicked treatment heaped upon many of our people by Catholic priests and other hoodlum and lawless elements acting under the influence of such priests. These Catholic clergymen have led mobs which have committed assaults upon women and children as well as men. Catholic priests have violently assaulted and struck women in the back and torn their clothes and otherwise maltreated them. When complaint was made to public officers with requests that such priests be arrested for their unlawful conduct, the officers, influenced by the religious element, have pushed the complaint aside and refused to make any arrest. Eight. In other parts of the United States where conventions were being arranged in conjunction with this one, Catholic priests, sheriffs, chief of police, officers in the American Legion, acting together with other lawless elements, have led mobs and have driven our people like wild beasts from their homes and out of the community where they reside. Manifestly, it was the intention of such lawless elements to prevent our body of Christian people from holding any convention in any part of the United States. But in this they have failed. And by God's grace, we have been permitted to come here. For all of these things we give thanks to God, well knowing that according to his promise, all things shall work together for ultimate good for those who love him. Nine. We recite these facts as further and corroborative proof that the Lord Jesus, the great King, true to his promise, is now present, separating his sheep from the goats. The Lord declared that the lawless elements, led by religionists and other lawbreakers, would commit deeds of violence against his servants, and such lawless persecuting elements he calls goats that the people who treat his servants with kindness and consideration and who are of goodwill toward God are designated as his sheep. In this same prophetic utterance, Jesus stated that the wicked deeds performed by the ghosts against his servants, he would count as though they had been done to him in person. That all good deeds performed toward his servants, he would count as done to him personally. Thus he shows that the goats will be fighting against the Lord, while the sheep will be for the Lord. Then to the goats who are wicked, he says, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And to those of goodwill, he says, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 32 to 46. Thus it is seen that the Roman Catholic hierarchy that rules and controls millions of people, together with the lawless element of other organizations, acting under the influence of that religious body, are in the goat class, and are doing exactly what the Lord foretold they would do, and that these facts should awaken the people to the importance of this hour. That hierarchy and other unlawful elements are the real enemies of the American government, the enemies of all righteousness, and above all, 
the enemy of God and opposers of the theocratic government. There are millions of sincere and honest Catholic persons, many of whom are now fleeing from the dominating control of the Catholic hierarchy and finding refuge in the Lord. To all such we send our greetings and bid you God's blessing. The kingdom of God, the great theocracy by Christ Jesus, is your only hope of salvation to life. Hence, to his servants, the Lord said concerning the present time, ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, 9. We delight to declare ourselves wholly and completely devoted to the great theocratic government, the kingdom of Jehovah God by his king, Christ Jesus, the world's rightful ruler, and we welcome the opportunity of bearing the reproach that has been heaped upon the Lord and upon his holy name. We call upon all order-loving people throughout the land to take notice of the fact that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that their only means of life is to flee from the dominating wicked influence now being exercised by the lawless and flee to the theocratic rule of Christ Jesus. To all such order-loving people, we extend our kindest wishes, be they Catholic, Protestant, Jew, bond, or free. There is but one means of salvation, and that is by Jehovah God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. All in favor of this resolution say aye. 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 